Hello and welcome to another AYCB how to play video. I'm Carlo and today I'm going to be dishing up Queens to be or not to be, which is an abstract set collection game for two to four players that'll test your spatial awareness and pattern building abilities. Players will be competing to take orchid tokens off the central communal board, place them in their storage supplies, they'll later bloom fields to produce honey, and once any player has built five fields in their supply, it'll trigger the end of the game, at which point we'll tally the points, and the player with the most points will win. Let me show you how to play. First, fill the main board, also known as the garden, with orchid tokens drawn at random from the supply. Leave the remaining tokens nearby. Next to those, set the diversified production tokens in a stack ordered from highest to lowest, with the number 10 on top. Since I'll be demonstrating a two-player game, we'll only need the 6 and the 10 for this game. Shuffle the 24 field tiles and form a stack. Draw the top 5 from the stack and place them next to the board. These will be available for all players. Each player then takes one player board, three hives, and one set of five honey pots. Here we have the scoring track with scoring tokens for each player, matching the symbols on their respective player boards. Randomly determine a starting player, and then the player on their right chooses the starting row or column for the gardener to stand in front of. Now we're ready to play. Players will take turns in clockwise order. On your turn, you can take one of two possible actions. The first action is to take orchid tokens off the central board and add them to your personal storage board. And the second option is to fill a field by adding orchid tokens and or hives from your own supply to the field. Let me show you how those actions work. First, note that some orchid tokens have anywhere from 1 to 3 bees on them, but the majority have no bees. I'll explain more about the bees as we go. If you choose to take new orchid tokens, you can only take orchid tokens from the row or column of the gardener. There, you may take 1, 2, or 3 orchid tokens based on these rules. If you take only one token, you can choose any token with or without bees. The only way you may take a token with bees is if you only take that one token on your turn. If you take two tokens, you can choose to take two of the same color or different colors. No bees. If you take three tokens, they must all be of a different color. Again, no bees. When you take the tokens, move them to your personal storage board. They can be stored in any order. If you do not have enough room, you cannot take that many orchid tokens. You cannot take extras and discard the ones you don't have room for. After you take your orchid tokens, you'll end your turn by moving the gardener clockwise. He'll take as many steps as the number of orchid tokens you took. Rather than taking tokens off the central board, you can fill a field on your turn instead. Here's how you do that. You'll do this by taking one of the available fields from the common supply, and filling all five of its spaces with any combination of orchid tokens and or hives from your supply. You may not leave empty spaces when taking this action. If you already have at least one completed field, you must place any new fields adjacent to existing ones. When placing these fields, just note that you can rotate them or flip them in any way you'd like. Each honey color that you produce will earn you points. If you just created or enlarged an area with two or more orchid tokens of the same color, you produce honey of that color and score points. First, you score one victory point for each orchid token of that area. Then, if this is the first time you produce this honey color, take the matching honey pot token and place it on your honey production track. Do not score for this yet. Once you place your fifth honey pot token on your production track, you'll take the diversified production token from the top of the stack. Some orchid tokens have bees on them. The ones with a single bee are called queens. Those have a special one-time ability that can only be activated right when the queen is selected off the board. If you choose to do so, after taking a queen and putting it in your supply, you may immediately swap it with one of your existing orchid tokens from any of your previously bloomed fields. The token that you replace with your queen returns to your storage board. You do not produce honey or score additional points when swapping the queen token with one of your others. And remember, this is an optional ability, but if you don't do it immediately when you take the queen from the board, you cannot do this later. As I said before, you can place hives on your fields when filling them up, just the same as you can place your other orchid tokens. At the end of the game, each hive will score you points for the number of bees on the eight spots, adjacent and diagonal, surrounding the hive. Once a hive is placed, it can never be moved or replaced, not even by a queen. You might have noticed this rare black orchid token over here. There are only three of these in the entire game, and although they can be a gamble, they are sometimes worth it. On your turn, if you choose to take a black orchid token from the garden board, it's the only token you can take from that row or column. Immediately discard the black orchid token, 
then reveal three random orchid tokens from the supply. Choose either one or two of those three, you can even take both if they both have bees, and place those on your personal storage board. If one of the three revealed tokens is another black orchid, you cannot take that token. Reshuffle the orchids not chosen into the supply, then, as you normally would, move the gardener forward one step to end your turn. You will only ever refill the board with orchid tokens or refill this supply with fields when one of the following situations occurs. First, if the gardener stops in front of an empty row or column, the player that moved the gardener there will earn a victory point. Then you'll refill the entire board at random with orchid tokens. If a player takes the last available field, that player earns a victory point. Then they'll draw five new fields to replenish the common supply. If the gardener crosses the red arrow here at the corner of the main garden board, the player that moved the gardener earns a victory point. Then they'll refill all the spaces on the garden and draw new fields until there are five in the supply. Once a player blooms their fifth field, each player will get one final turn before the game ends. Your final turn will be the same as any other turn, except you can still take the fill a field action even if you can't fully fill all five spaces on the field. Players then score extra points for their hives. Score each hive individually, since the same orchid token can earn points for multiple hives. Count the number of bees around each hive to score that many points for each one. Then, if you have a diversified production token, add its value to your final score as well. The player with the most points wins. If there's a tie, the player with the most bees wins. If the game is still tied, players share the victory. And that's how you play Queens. Keep an eye out for my video review as well as my full written review in the next few days. You can check it out at allyoucanboard.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out any of our other social media platforms. Thanks for watching and see you next time.